We have gathered here this afternoon in God's presence as family and friends to remember the life of Patricia McCork and to commend her soul into the gracious care of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death, resurrection. Now listen to the words of grace from the Bible. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Let us pray. O oh God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. Give us now your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live so that nothing in life or in death will separate us from your great love in Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now hear the words from Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He, lies, he leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the path, bright paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We now have a litany of remembrance. If you'll all join me in the refrain, it's on the back of your program. And think of Patty as we do this. In the rising of the sun and in its <coughs> setting, we remember that. In the blowing of the wind and the glow of a winter fire, we will remember that. When we gather greens and hang a special Christmas ornament, we will remember that. In the blooming of the daffodils and the rebirth of spring, we will remember that. When we speak, rustling of leaves and the beauty of autumn, we will remember that. When we share stories, books, and laughter, we will remember that. And all together we can say, we will remember all these things that she had other family and friends, shared her talents, laughed with her grandchildren. She touched us all with her gentle spirit, kindness, love and courage. So, so long as we live, she too shall live, for she is always in our hearts. I'm Reverend Christian Castro from Harvard Presbyterian Church, and I am honored to be here today to stand before you and conduct the service. And unfortunately, I did not have the privilege of meeting Patricia in person. But from the little I know from her, we could tell and retell of all the wonderful aspects of Patricia and her life. And it's a good thing we have these memories because they will be with us forever. From what I um, talked to her husband, Ryan, 
and he shared with me, I believe there is a scripture that would summarize Patricia's life well. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Friends, I am here today to tell you that into the silence of death, Jesus speaks. He says, this isn't the end. Trust me with Patricia's body. I am the resurrection and the life. Do not be afraid. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. Trust me also with Patricia's soul. She's now with me enjoying new life in paradise. Mm -hmm. As she must go through the valley of death, I am with her every step of the way. And into the silence of death, the family and friends speak. They speak of how nice Patricia was, <laughs> of how they never heard her say anything bad about anybody. They speak of how she loved everything and everyone, of how she loved to travel, to see places and do things, of how she enjoyed watching her Portland Trailblazers play. They speak of her unconditional love to people, of how no matter what people did to her, she learned to love them with all her heart. Mm -hmm. And they speak of how she loved to bring the family together and how she has made the entire family stronger by spending more time together often. And finally, into death, Patricia also speaks. She would say, for nothing was able to separate me from the love of Christ not tribulations or distress or persecution, not even death. And she would say, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us. Just as Christ has led me through the valley of death to the perfectly still waters and green pastures, so he will lead you to. Let us pray. God of, uh, of us all, your love never ends. When all else fails, you still are God. We pray to you for one another in our need and for all, anywhere who mourn with us this day. To those who doubt, give light. To those who mourn, comfort and strength. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another, the love that Patricia taught us and lived out for us. Amen. Now, let us commit the body of Patricia to its resting place. Will you close your eyes and bow your heads one more time. Almighty God, into your hands we now commend your daughter Patricia. Ensure certainty, hope of the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This body we commit to its resting place, there to be laid to rest until God calls it to resurrection. Amen. Amen. You may now receive God's benediction. Those of you who desire may stretch out your hands. Now to the one who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of God's glory, with rejoicing to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our services here today. I know that your presence here today has been a great source of comfort to the family, and on their behalf and on behalf of the staff and directors of the Preferred Cremation and Burial, we thank you for your attendance. At this time, I'd ask for those of you who have roses to step forward, place it on the casket, and then kindly return to your cars. Or if you'd like to keep it, Or if you'd like to keep it, you may do so as well.
first I'm going to give you an overview of Patty's life. Since some of you have just had the privilege of knowing her for a few a month or a few weeks, and others of you have known her for many, many years. So I in, fall in the category of knowing Patty for many, many years. In fact, about 60 years, if it would be told, because Patty and I met in the third grade. And we met at Sunday school, and we uh, every Sunday would meet and have a good time together. So then it turned out that when we got to junior high school, we were put in every single class together. And the rest is history, because we've been just the best of friends ever since. So what I've learned, and especially in this last week, is that Patty didn't just know people. They loved her. And friends, family, once a part of her life, it was like forever. And so as I read a time in her life that will go over some of the highlights of her life of where she's uh, been, I thought I would have invite the people to stand. So I'll try to pause. If you are from way back or whenever you come into Patty's life, because Patty held on to her friends. <laughs> yes, and I'm an example. My sister's here who was also an example. So as we start, Patty Ray Pingle was born in 1942 in Cedar Falls, Iowa to Ray and Georgia Pingle. And they <clears throat> lived in Iowa for about three years until Patty was about three. And at that time, they moved to San Diego because Patty had a form of anemia that uh, was with her the rest of her life, but which she dealt with as she did everything <laughs> in a courageous way, in a way that many people didn't even know about the problem. They moved in San Bernardino so that they would have a warmer and drier climate for Patty to grow up in. And the family, I don't know about the rest of Patty's family, uh, Georgia and his family didn't move out until later, but uh, five years after they moved here, uh, her brother Bob was born. So Bob could stand. <laughs> okay. And if you haven't noticed, if uh, you will see that if you want to see which ones are related to Patty on the Pingle side, just look for all the tall ones. <laughs> uh, and you will see where they are. Uh, Patty went to school and in San Bernardino, she went to all the grades, and as another connection I have, my aunt was her kindergarten teacher. So that even goes way back. Um, we, <clears throat> as in junior high, this was something that approached me that nobody probably else would know, but Patty became school treasure with the motto, make your money jingle, vote for Patty Pingle. <laughs> She won the election. <laughs> we had a neighbor, uh, the neighbor's names were Pagel, and they always thought it would be fun if Patty married one of them, and it would be Patty Pingle Pagel. <laughs> uh, some of the memories of growing up, and Bob certainly could share even more, but I remember uh, Georgia was a piano teacher, and they always had the piano in their living room and she taught lessons there. And her dad taught at the community college, was a professor of business there. And my husband happened to have her dad as a teacher. So that was another connection as we go along. But at the house growing up and I got to go and have sleepovers a lot, uh, Tripoli was a game that was with them then, and I know from being in uh, Lake Tahoe and places when we would visit, Tripoli was always a favorite game to play. We used to play it in the back room, and I would have to have people tell me how you gambled or what all those combinations were. But then after high school, Patty uh, went to a different high school than I did, which had been a big trauma at the time it happened, but it turned out to be the best thing 
for us probably because we had two different sets of friends to bring together at that time. And Patty went to Occidental College. And would the Occidental friends stand if they're here? <laughs> Okay, we have sorority sisters. Uh, they were Delta's and uh, Delta's husbands and things like that from Occidental. So tired. she kept in touch through. Um, they had yearly almost reunions lately, right, with the Deltas, the sorority sisters, and then with Delta wannabes or whatever that got included, like I got included once or twice as well. And then after graduation from Occidental, Patty uh, started her teaching career along with Sharon Dawson, who is right here. And they went up to the Bay Area and Patty taught in Lafayette for three years. And then decided uh, that she would move back down to San Diego uh, where I was, but other people and friends as well. And when she moved to San Diego, uh, she met another friend of mine, and they moved into some apartments in, Bill, help me, or where was it? Uh, South Bay Club. In the South Bay Club. And those people could stand up now that met Patty at around that time when she moved back to San Diego. <laughs> And this is Stephanie Wording and Bill Wording, and then Kathy Noble, who helped set up this uh, nice reception for us today. And Patty taught in Encinitas when she was uh, in this area. She taught for several years, and she met Mike Wilson, who she married. And his business made them have a lot of travel. And Patty was so excited. She loved the idea of adventure and travel, which she and Brian have been able to do a lot of as well. And they lived in Utah in Palm Springs. And it was in Palm Springs, I think, that Patty decided real estate might be more for her than teaching. And then she moved to Hawaii. And there are friends from Hawaii that could stand. <laughs> uh, we have friends that go back that far, which was around 77 Seven. or so? 77. Yeah. OK. So again, friends that we have, she had connections with still today. Um, and then from Hawaii, oh, and Lindsay was arrived in 1978. And then in 81, 82, uh, they moved uh, to Lake Oswego, Oregon, which I can tell you from talking to Patty, she loved. <laughs> she thought this was the greatest place ever. It had four seasons. Uh, she loved every one of them, even the rain. And that's the one thing she was missing the most was rain already in the two months she had been here. We don't understand, but she seemed to think that it would be a good thing. So when I heard the weather forecast for yesterday and today, I thought, I'm not going to complain. Patty would love it. She would think the rain was great. Um, when she uh, moved to Lake Oswego, she really took up real estate and uh, really was such a successful um, real estate agent. And I know we have at least one person that was bought a house from her when she got the two, or we have even more. She sold her house, or bought a house in in Hawaii. Oh, okay, there we go. I didn't even know it went that part back. I knew that Rob had bought, uh, Patty was his agent too. She but, and, yeah, and she mine. My son a house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, she, again, just like with friends, she loved it. I mean, she just really had found what she liked to do. And I think when I went with her once, what was so special is she thought it was the greatest thing to match people with the perfect home and see if they couldn't find the perfect place that they would live. And she was very successful at doing that, as we've said. And then comes 1989, and she met Brian. <laughs> and um, they were married in 1992. And she found a wonderful person to share what turned out to be the rest of her life with, and a person that supported her through everything and supported her family and took care of 
helped her take care of her dad and uh, mom when they moved in 2000. But aside from that, Patty was very excited to extend her family and not only have um, her daughter, but she had three sons-in-law and, I mean, three sons of Brian's and their wives. And, well, I guess, Rob, your wife would then come along until a little later. <laughs> she, but at any rate, she really enjoyed inviting them to be part or having them blended into the family that was so important to her and their get-togethers. And 18 years ago, the first granddaughter was born and that I understand now. <laughs> and this was a joy to have <laughs> Even if Emma doesn't want to stand there. <laughs> but, uh, the, there now are seven grandchildren, but Emma was the first, and it was after Patty and Brian had been married in uh, about three years after they were married. That, so she got to enjoy all of them for a long time and enjoyed doing lots of things with them, like going to blazer games and concerts and our uh, different plays and things like that. Her mom and dad did move up there uh, to Portland area in 2000, around 2000. And her mother, who I was always a big baseball fan along with her mother and listening to Vin Scully on the radio and watching, or her mother listened to the Lakers, that Patty passed her allegiance to the Blazers. Yay. She became a big Blazers fan. And every time uh, when we were going up there during basketball season, she would talk about wanting to go to the Blazers games. And many friends and family, it's just so hard to think how many friends and have been affected because Patty and Brian, both of them, so loving and wonderful and needing friends, they had left many, many friends, couple friends, single friends back behind in Lake Oswego. And then they moved two months ago to Rancho Bernardo, and we have a new set of friends that had already come and are supporting her here today, even though they get, didn't get to know her for very long. So what I think we can say that friends and family defined Patty, and or Patricia. I learned, I thought, that is a, really a beautiful name, Patricia. And as we put it on, Patricia McCourt, a friend, um, wherever a beautiful soul has been, there is a trail of memories, and Patty certainly has left a lot behind. And we would like to invite you, if you would like to come and share another memory, uh, or we could pass the microphone around and try. <laughs> would anyone like to come? Sandra, would you like to come up here? Or? Okay. Steve said it would be easier to record if we came up here. We're being recorded. Yeah. Oh, I forgot right, to right. say that. I must tell you under, uh, not what they say when you get a call. Yeah. Well, I have to say that getting old has a lot of problems, but one of them that is not a problem is that I probably have known Patty longer than anyone could have known her because I remember pushing her in her stroller when she was, oh, a year old, less than a year old, because I would go visit in uh, Cedar Falls. And um, her family has always been a big part of, of my life because I had no brothers and sisters. And so Patty was like a sister, a younger sister. And Bob too, but a younger brother. So uh, that's one of my fond memories. Also Patty was in our wedding. She was a junior bridesmaid when we got married. And Ray, her father, gave me away when we got married. So those memories are very fond memories and I'll always have them. I had told Sandra that I had a memory of that wedding because Patty was a junior bridesmaid and they were at the Brown Derby having restaurant, uh, having dinner and her, she cut her chicken and the peas scooted all over the tablecloth. <laughs> Funny memory that people about 13 or 14 thought was something that they would be I'm Sharon Dawson. I'm from Portland, and Patty has been in my life since we were freshmen at Oxy together. 
Uh, we roomed in a dorm for a couple of years together, and actually three years together, and then um, a local sorority. And then when we graduated, we went up to Berkeley in those wild 60s. And um, that was just the beginning of, this, the, of the free speech movement, and there were all kinds of demonstrations. And we were pretty naive little girls from Oxdale College in, in Southern California, and there was all this rioting stuff going around, and there were demonstrations and whatever, and so we decided we would go to a demonstration. And on the way, we went, we must have gone through an alley or something, and there were some Campbell soup signs there. And so we picked up these Campbell soup signs. So we're walking around with Campbell soup signs when people are, you know, no war, you know, no, you know, da 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 da. And we're walking around with our Campbell soup signs. So I'm surprised we didn't get either arrested or thrown in the loony bin for not getting it at all. But Patty and I then, um, we lived together for about three years up there, and then she moved down here, and we parted ways, and then she went all those different places, St. Um, um, Las Vegas and, and Utah and all those things, and then she finally came back to Portland, and she arrived from Hawaii to kind of check it out, and she arrived in the middle of the rainy season in these cute little sandals and this cute little dress with spaghetti straps, and I said, lady, you got to get a raincoat. So, <laughs> so she did. and. We had wonderful times together there and met Brian. I remember going to their wedding. I had an exchange student who was from Brazil at the time in 1992, and he still remembers the American wedding that he got to go to, and it was really very wonderful. So a wonderful friend, and I'll miss it. As you already know, I was blessed to know Patty from the late 70s. I was in the military at the time, Patty and uh, Mike, were already living there, and when we arrived, she uh, welcomed us back. We had known them before we got to Hawaii, but uh, she said, uh, I can help you find a house, and she did. Well, being Hawleys, or mainlanders, depending on what they wanted to call us, we were used to having houses with garages. And if you've ever lived in Hawaii, you know that a garage is pretty rare. It's carports. And Mike and Patty said, could you help us build our carport into a garage so that we can cover up all that junk. And I said, sure. And it turned out to be a weekend job on that project. However, they were well settled into the community. And before I knew it, I was over there as a military guy, and of course, had a little bit of time. So uh, she said, would you like to help this person? They saw our garage, and they would love to have one. So I did that garage. That garage led to another garage, led to another garage. And by the time I left, I think I'd done about eight to 10 garages. But the final note was one of their very best friends said, can you take over the honey-do list? This gentleman was not very handy, and his wife had a list this long. So they introduced me to him, and uh, this list showed up on the refrigerator with a key to their house, a credit card belonging to them, and said, whenever you get a chance, I only lived about two or three blocks away, whenever you get a chance, stop by and just work off this list. I was there for three years and I was working that list the whole time. <laughs> and I owe that all to Patty. And, uh, I, uh, Actually, I want to give you my credit card. <laughs> that was uh, in the 70s. This is the 20s and I'm not quite up to that anymore. <laughs> But uh, no, I've been blessed to know both Patty and Mike, and now I'm looking forward to get to know Brian. Hi, my name is Leah, Leah Christie, and I've known Patty for over 30 years vicariously through Bob, and who is Jim Christie's best friend. And so there was always so much talk about Patty, Patty. And then I finally got to meet this beautiful woman who, when she walked into the room, she lit up every room that she walked into. I just adored her because she was so down to earth. There was not one phony bone in her body. And she made everybody feel like they were part of who she was and part of her group. I just loved her. And we were all so fortunate to, to ever come into contact with her, 
let alone to really know her as a friend. And Brian, I was thinking about you, <coughs> and I wrote a poem. And so, I want to read that poem. And it's something that I think that Patty would say to you. It's called The Great Oak Tree. The Great Oak Tree. Come lay with me here under the great oak tree, in the meadow midst the flowers, where all colors set us free. Touch the fleeting cloud floating playfully above. Cover us with the softness as you cover me with your love. I reach across and touch your warmth as a million times before. Your laughter, smile, soft skin, beautiful lips, caress me to my core. I dream a dream of our sweet love, close as the moon, bright as the stars above. Now we're lifted up on angel wings where there are no uprooted things. One last sweet kiss, one last goodbye. We'll meet again when you touch the sky. No bitter tears, only bright, bright flowers here as the oak tree and the meadows surround us so near. Love will go on as the universe turns to the bright silver light where sweet passion burns. Until then, my love, a kiss, a smile, a hand that lets go, a reason to live, a reason to know that nothing dies ever. I'll be there for your show. Go to the oak tree as you step through the veil. Release the happiness that you really feel. The hand of God waits. He's kissing your sweet face. You're beautiful and healthy. There's no pain in this face. Anyway, thank you everybody for just being a part of Patty's life. She enjoyed each and every one of you and all the many, many people she met throughout the years. And I love her brother, <laughs> who couldn't love Bob. And she loved him so much, but we always had so much fun when we got together. And I remember when she met Brian and, and the sweet, sweet love that was there and the romance and everything that followed. So never, ever shall we forget Patty. Thank you. Well, if not, that is a beautiful way to finish. And that was a lovely statement. So, um, and I, Thank you all. If you could maybe share a memory if you haven't done it. We thought we would put these together for Brian. And then, as Jen had said to me earlier, the grandchildren would probably love reading about their grandmother. Emma's 18, but the youngest are three. So they would have a chance to know what Grandma Patty was like for them, too. So if you get a chance, we'll put it in the memory book. And if you hadn't had a chance to look at the memory book or the pictures, please try to do it before you leave. You don't have to leave now. But we'll, <laughs> thanks for coming. Thank you.